mid-autumn term at Lillian Bayliss School in South London, where head teacher Gary Phillips faces a tough year hitting GCSE targets to get off the government's national challenge hit list, in spite of recent plaudits from Ofsted. But today, the boot's on the other foot. Gary's been invited to the Institute of Directors to address senior civil servants from the DCSF on how they could improve. Lillian Bayliss is a tough urban school. Gary was appointed as head teacher in 2002, and he was the sixth head in five years in that school. The results at the time were that 6% of young people in the school got five straight A to Cs. Um, Gary, I hope he doesn't mind me saying, has had a, a fairly non-traditional route in, into headship. Um, he was sent to an approved school at the age of 12. Um, and I've got a quote from him here. Uh, I got involved in all sorts of incidents, aggression, fighting, and wasn't achieving at all, he said. I was constantly being sent home. So uh, a non-traditional route into headship, uh, you could say. Hand over to Gary. Thank you very much. You've taken, you've taken my notes, did you? <laughs> I'd like to ask you what you think your role is, whether it's strategy, direction, policy analysis and development, or whether you actually think you're a school improvement agency responsible for delivery. Because as a head teacher, I have to say the role is unclear. There is a feeling of micromanagement as well as the department trying to lead on strategy. The department's very clear now, isn't it? All schools below 30% must be eliminated. Good afternoon, Gary. I'm David Bell, the Permanent Secretary. I don't know if you recall, but the very first time you met me, you swore at me. But I think I'll forgive you because it was the day of the National Challenge launch. There was an occasion prior to that when I was um, not quite as, as unpolite, actually, at the National Education Trust launch, which you don't remember, luckily. <laughs> the policy has been run by a Dalek, isn't it? Under 30% destroy. To avoid the school being exterminated, at least 30% of Year 11s must get five A to Cs with English and Maths, a key to which is the early completion of coursework. Getting the BTEC um, examiner in. Mm -hmm. Get them in as soon as possible to spend a day with you and Michelle to look at the work and portfolio that, as it develops. They won't want to see you teaching. They just want to look through yeah. the folders with you. Yeah, that'd be great. Michelle did it with the um, music BTEC. Yeah and fantastic results on the Good. first module. Okay. And Sean's done it as well. Oh, and it'll cost three, four hundred quid, but it's money yeah. well spent. Okay. okay? It also means enabling students to take GCSE from year nine onwards. Harvesting them early is, is good for everybody all around. And for many of our children who come from families where continuity of care is an issue sometimes, to get the qualifications when they're in a good period is good. It's been a good year, Miss Waldrop. Thank you very much. Yes, it has, yeah. Deputy Head Sue Waldrop's worked with Gary for the last eight years. She line manages English, maths and science. We could have got 37% of those seven children if, yeah. hadn't had all those awful things happen in their personal lives. Yep. Well, going by the data, Miss, boys achieved almost as well as girls. Mm-hmm. And that's down to all that good monitoring you did, actually, with Andrew all year. So thank you for that. Certainly one of the things I'm, I'm trying to push in English is that we get a lot of... The reason they haven't achieved is because maths did better. Um, but actually, when you look at the national data, it's, they're pretty similar results. We just have to look at that as a, as a tool for convincing the English department that, you know, the children can do as well in English as they do in maths. We yeah. know that. Not, yeah. I can't even start to talk about it without fuming. Pressure comes from the authority onto the head, onto senior management, onto middle management. It's that hierarchy. And I know that the head goes to difficult, in inverted commas, meetings if things don't go well. And it comes back to school and then we have difficult meetings. Gary's fully aware of the pressure that's transmitted down onto the heads of department. Well, they're right, aren't they? Of course there is. What else can you say? They're absolutely right. The, 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 the political climate is that schools below 30% are unviable now. So if we're going to do all the other good work we're going to do, we have to do the 30%. It's that simple. Unless our results are good, 
then we have um, things being put in place in individual departments to ensure that results improve. So the view of senior managers is that if the middle managers can't sort it out, we need to sort it out for them. So rather than making my own decisions about what will be taught and when and how, or in the department with my colleagues, I'll be told by senior management when I have to do certain things and how I have to do certain things. But it's good, isn't it? Week one, we've got it out. Everybody knows what's going on. Very good, yes. OK, so the target is 60-40, and we've agreed that. That's aiming to go up from 50% A to C GCSE to 60, and from 30 to 40 with English and Maths. He stuck out his tongue at me and grinned. This is a big word. Let's see if we can get this one. What if I chop it in half? Mm -hmm. Reservation. Reservations. Well done. Good well, I've heard from you, Ahmed. Sharon, could you read out B for us, please? Where male sex cells are made. Very good. Can you tell me the name of where they are? Or um, do you want me to do the wandering finger trick? Over there. No. There, yeah. Good. And what's that called? The testes. Oh. The testes. Correct. OK. C. Sarah, could you read out C and tell us what, where it is, please? Where, where a baby could develop. Good. Uh, good morning, uh, Year 11. As you know, uh, today's the launch of your major project day for your GCSE uh, product design. And it's a great pleasure to introduce two people, both are specialist teachers of design technology who now work with schools to help raise achievement. And that's why we've brought them in today. And you'll see them through the year helping you secure the highest possible grade. And I'm going to hand over straight away to Kevin, who's going to introduce. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're here today to support you in your design and technology yes. coursework. You just think about it, there's no pressure. If you've done the... Gary's insisted that Year 11s who are in the running for a C or above complete their English coursework three months ahead of schedule. You're here because for whatever reason, the Romeo and Juliet essay, you may have done the other three, but the Romeo and Juliet essay is missing from your coursework file. Now, the problem with that is that it's an automatic naught. It means that you will not get any marks for that essay at all. Does anyone know how much of a percentage the Romeo and Juliet alone... How well done. It's 5%. So the first aim is really to give you a structure to get a minimum grade C. So we're going to hit a grade C, but obviously the majority of you want to get up to an A and a B. Right, Stephen, could you read the sentence at the very top of the coursework guide? How does Shakespeare make the audience feel sorry for <clears throat> Juliet in Act 3, Scene 5 of Roman and Juliet? Right, stop. Before Act 3, Scene 5 opens, how might the audience be feeling about Juliet? Do you think they'll be sympathetic to her? Do you think they like her? She's from a rich background, I mean. Right, um, one, she's quite rich and well-off, so the audience might feel she's got everything she'd ever need. Spoiled, yeah. Bit spoiled. Said, OK, so just because she's rich, the audience might feel a bit jealous, because most of them aren't. Can anyone think why the audience might be a bit cross with her or think she's a bit of a nuisance? She's got married she's... to um, Thingy first. And her parents need right, whose law has she broken? The Capulet's law. Yes, so she, a Capulet, has deliberately gone out of her way to marry an <laughs> enemy even know as well. person. Now, what don't they? Who doesn't know what? The parents don't know that they got married. Well done. I think it's good in terms of getting the work done and ticking boxes to say that's been completed. I don't think it's very good in terms of quality. Um, because quality only comes after reflection and re revision and editing. What we're trying to do is take charge of the situation for these children and say, you know, we're the adults in this situation, this is, our, this is the plan of action, and we're going to do it, and we're going to help you achieve it so that you don't end up in a situation where the children are stressed about their English coursework and, and it has on a massive, a massive repercussions in other subject areas. Now, what we're going to try to get you to do today, in one day, many schools will take eight weeks over. And they're taking eight weeks over it because they're getting their students to pull off lots of pictures from the internet, get the Argos catalog, and it's irrelevant. Every piece of information you put on your research page today 
needs to be relevant. You need to be able to say to either your teacher or one of us why you've put it there and give us a good reason for it. The second weakness that we see all over the country every time I do moderation is that the research that you present doesn't address your target audience. So the target audience might be teenagers, for instance. And all of a sudden, I look at a piece of research and the target audience is babies. And I'm thinking, what have you put that for? Don't you understand the target audience? So the research has got to address who your target user is, your client, your target user, your market group. It's got to be directed at them to get an A. We only have one target, which is to achieve above 30% with our five OTCs with English and Maths. So, um, you know, we're close to 20% already. But that's the easy 20%. But the next 10 to 20% are the difficult ones. The 20% that are in the bank are those students who've taken their exam early. Let's have a look at this coursework then. OK, well, it's um, actually half finished his original writing, but don't tick it yet. OK. Um, and that's, he's now finished the Romeo and Juliet, so he's got nothing else to do, so I'm going to give him some help with the original writing okay. in class right, next sorry. week, because he's too weak to actually do it on his own at home. Okay. Right. It's pressure, obviously, from me, but it's with the best of intentions. Uh, well, he knows I'm there to support him. There. I'm a pair of hands. He's one of those he's unknown No, he's borderline. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, he could go to see. Yeah. Um, he's st just about finished now. He's got one more paragraph to do. OK. But it's like getting blood out of a stone. It's taken him three periods to do one paragraph, so... Yeah, but that's why they're in course of whatever we want to call it. OK, away from here, unless you're in 7 or 11, please. 7 and 11. 7 and 11, Shaquan, you're too tall to try and hide. Thanks, William. No, don't do that tutty business at me. Black shoes, not black trainers. Those are trainers. You need to go around with those shoes, Jack. Yeah, the problem is a lot of them are these shoes that be like clown shoes. And they're like, they're so them as shoes now. Well, you're going to have to let me, as ever, I think you're going to have use to. my MPQH well, to its I, fullest powers. I think there's bloody trainers myself, mate. Let's, uh, find, a, fi let's find a few pairs. I think they're shoes. Their shoes. What are those? Clown shoes. Yeah. Let me see those. You see what I mean? It's difficult, isn't it, now? Mm. Can you lift your foot up like you're a horse having it shoot? See, to me, I think that's a trainer. It is a trainer. Or is it a shoe? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, well, that's right. We've got a dilemma. We've got to make a stand whether we go for a, a total shoe or a trainer. You can put but your foot down now, thank you. The thing is, they are being sold as shoes. If it's got a heel, it's a shoe. No, but they're doing it like that now. And no, of course not. Yeah, it's clever as hell. That's got to be the way to define it, hasn't it? Well. Mama did it.